What's up guys, welcome back. I hope everyone is doing good. Before we get started, I need to tell you about the brand new Downbeat collaboration vinyl with Knock Loose. As is tradition, ridiculous death metal slip cover for their new album, You Won't Go Before You're Supposed To. We did a crazy mutated beagle. It's got the Downbeat death metal logo. The Knock Loose logo is in this crazy slam font. It is gory, disgusting death metal. And guess what? Behind it contains their actual album, You Won't Go Before You're Supposed To, which is my album of the year. It's like a translucent vinyl with a green splatter, limited to 500. You can pick it up, www.thedownbe.at. I will put a link on that front page that will take you to Pure Noise Records. Provided it hasn't sold out on the Patreon, you'll be able to get it right now. www.thedownbe.at. The downbe.at so it spells downbeat check it out support the podcast support the band in first week sales which is so so important support me also important as ever this episode of the downbeat was brought to you by those wonderful people at display let me do something for you right now if you're just listening you're going to be able to hear it if you're watching you're going to be able to see it as well hear that that was a bit of paper. I just used, I reckon, 0.1% of my extreme power to destroy that bit of paper. Now, let, let's listen to this. That's rock hard for metal. And that's what this plate's all about. Metal posters mount on the wall with a magnet. No mess, no drilling, any sort of design you want. You like movies? Pop it in the search, they're definitely going to have it. You like a sports team, you're a sports guy, they're going to have it. You like the podcast, The Downbeat, we got a store for that. Displate.com forward slash The Downbeat. Use the code Downbeat and you can get 22% off one to two displays or 33% off three or more. It's good for the environment, it's good for your walls. Your house looks rubbish anyway. Displate.com, the code is Downbeat. When I talk to you about metal, when I talk to you about metal core, when I talk to you about hardcore... If you're not thinking of the band Knock Loose, then your opinion is invalid. One of the most important genre-defining bands of our era. They've only got better and better as they've got older. They're still so young. Great people, and I'm super excited to have, for the first time on video, Brian Garris back on the podcast. He is the vocalist in Knock Loose. He's got such a good voice. They've got such a good album, You Won't Go Before You're Supposed To, which is coming out on May the 10th. It's got features from Poppy, Chris from Motionless in White. I caught up with Brian in LA. I deliberately went to LA to do it with him because I was going to miss him when he was in Glasgow. We talk about the new album. It's super, super, super fun, laid back. I love him. He's such a nice down-to-earth guy. It's Brian Garris from Knock Loose on the Downbeat Podcast. Hi, Brian. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Thanks for coming on. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Um, you were... Audio... Did we do the Audio Only One pandemic? Yeah. I remember where the fuck... I think I was like sat on a bed doing it and yeah. now things have changed to like this. Yeah, and I was in um, the spare bedroom of Taylor's mom's house. I was in my girlfriend's spare bedroom and just sat there we're doing a little thing like, how are you? Are you fucking bored? <laughs> yeah, we fun. talked about Last of Us for like an hour. Oh shit, we did. <laughs> was that, that was pre-show though? Yeah, pre-show. That was, I think it was pre-second game. I think I, we were talking about how excited I was for game two. That's real pandemic, bro. Yeah. No, oh, gaming, gaming, gaming. Yeah. Still gaming? Kind of. Just, I mean, honestly, not really. Um, I haven't, probably haven't played like a story mode since. Um, I just hop on Fortnite with my brothers. I used to, like, I haven't even really played with like Tom or Jordan or any of them. Because so you guys long. were the crew. Yeah. The pandemic but then we Fortnite were just, crew. I'm gone all the time. Tom's gone, all, you know what I mean? So it's like getting all four of us, Kyle's gone all the time. Getting all four of us home is just like, they hit me up so much and I had to be like, not home, not home, not home. So now when I'm home, I'll just like hop on with my brothers. It's also just like an excuse to catch up with them. You know what I mean? That's the, that's the reason I can only play multiplayer games because I like the chatting. It's like yeah. calling your boys and being yeah. like, yeah, what's going on? I can't sit there. I think that we fucking spent the last podcast me yeah. talking about how I can't sit there and 
doing yeah. the zombie shit. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, my brothers and I are very close. I don't know if I talked about this in the last one. Ex like, my best friends. So we're in a group chat talking all day, and then at night we're, like, on video games talking all night. So it's that's the reason I ever even started playing online games. Like, I'd never played a multiplayer game, and Trey was like, play Fortnite with me in Dallas. And I was like, all right, whatever. How old are you brothers now? Trey's 21. Dallas has just turned 24 a couple weeks ago. All, all three edge edgemen? No, not Dallas. No? No, the middle one, He he's a smoker. He f just smoking, though? He has some drinks every now and then, but I wouldn't consider him like a drinker. He just <sighs> likes to get high and chill and... Oh, he's a smoker. Yeah, yeah. Which I would take that over cigarettes any day. Yeah. Um, Still can't do it. I can't smoke weed. I wish I could. I, it made me really anxious. Yep. But I mean, I think that it, I mean, I see it benefit people. You know what I mean? I think for a lot of people, it can be beneficial. A lot of people, it just fucking cooks their brain though. Everyone yeah. I know that was smoking when I was smoking, like when I was a kid and they still smoke. Their brains are fucking gone. Yeah. Not yeah. even just like everyday life shit. They're just like, hey, I watched this video on how like these people are actually snakes. Yeah, like, yeah. You need to stop smoking. Weed. Yeah. I, I, I just mean like, I mean, for a lot of people, I would prefer weed to pharmaceuticals. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people use weed to cope with anxiety and um but yeah un i'm sure that's an unpopular opinion from a straight edge person but it'll be fucking legal everywhere in another yeah. 10 years anyway so out of the band is pack the only one that drinks yeah do you give him shit for it no what if he fucks up it's funny with Paxson because the only time we give him shit for fucking up is when he doesn't care that he fucked up like, all I want, because mistakes happen, and I kind of like, me personally, I like the, like, human nature of playing a show, that it's not going to be the same show every single night. And, like, as Knocked Loose grows and we introduce all these new things, like, we just switch to in-ears, all of us. Everyone on ears? Yeah, everyone. When? For the Motionless Tour. Because oh. it was like, there's not going to be monitors at this show, and, like, we're running bigger lights, bigger production, bigger everything. Like they're all on quad cortex now. Like things are just like getting there. So it's like, it's That's as really robotic as it can be. Yeah. I like the, the humanness of it. So like if he messes up, no big deal. We play 30 shows in a row. You're going to mess up. All I want is for him to be like, yo, my bad. Like I I'm working on it. Yeah. But like there would be days when he would just like blow it. And he'd be like, oh, shit happens. And we'd be like, no, get why is, better. Why is he blowing it? Drinking or just fucking Not drinking, shitty, just, like, show. just like shitty show. Yeah, I like saw it happens. Blue Ridge. Because I didn't know you guys were on a click until I saw Blue Ridge. Oh, yeah. And the click didn't work. It came out out front. Yeah, and then yeah. you just fucking canned it. Yeah, that one thing in my head, how I always justify these like growing pains of, okay, now you're going to be on ears, now you're going to be on click, whatever is that the second there's a technical difficulty, we can play the exact same set with none of it. You know yeah. what I mean? So, like, there are tracks now, but it's all just, like, sound effect shit. It's well, bass drops. Same as that, it's, the weird shit. And yeah, it, and it's, it's nothing that can't, that, like, we play our songs. So that day was, like, a, I don't remember why, but we were trying out a new front of house that day. Like, we met him that morning. And it's like rough. we're headlining Blue Ridge. Yeah, rough. Just like, I don't know why we thought that that would be fine, but um, I don't know what happened. I don't even think that it was his fault. I just think it was an easy mistake and like Click was coming out front and it, I'm the one in that moment where I'm just like, well, we're never doing this again. Tom's that one in our band. Yeah. Just, Fuck this. Yeah, we're never playing to a Click again. You know what I mean? But we have like the the people that dude we just took a monitor guy the dream two the sound guys dream. yeah it's like dude, every tour there's like a new conversation that's like oh 
that's happening now. Like we we take a merch truck, we take two sound guys. Like it's fucking crazy, and having like a nerdy front of house and a nerdy monitor guy that just like dude they matched every day clothing wise and really they just talked about sound like we oh, have you got real sound guys you yeah. got like not like a cool sound guy who like parties on tour you got the nerds yeah nice. and and they were just so great and they made like the transition into ears like so nice what do you have in your ears i just have as close to the record as possible like i literally told the our monitor guy sean I said, match Isaac's because I trust his ear and then give me more vocals. So, but you haven't got click. I only have, I don't have click. I have the coolest thing in my opinion about all of us being on ears is no count offs for songs. Yeah. Like, you know, when you watch Meshuggah and it's pitch black and then I don't know where it's like, dun, dun, dun. yeah. So in our ears, we have Siri going like one, two, three, four, and then the song will start. Um, so just like cues and stuff. I wish we could do that, but I'm the only one on ears. Yeah. Dude, that was the selling point for me. We watched Mashuga and Isaac was like, that's how they do that. And I was like, all right, I'll do it. When they like, open with Broken Clock and it's just pitch black. And yeah. Gen, 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 gen. Yeah. It's crazy. We we just played with them at Bloodstock. Oh, I saw that. I yeah. watched that on, on YouTube. The, yeah, they just yeah. put it out. Dude, I, oh, as soon as we got on site, first of all, Crowbar and mashuga same day is like a very weird representation of like a lot of knocked loose's influences if you think yeah. about it um i am obsessed with crowbar isaac's obsessed with mashuga it was a it was a great day and then all day we're asking people what's the mashuga situation like everybody's like everything's closed stage is closed front of house is closed i'm like whatever i'll go to barricade if i have to um finally um cam he's like i can get you front of house i'm just like dude done so like me and isaac and taylor are second story front of house you know those like big yeah, tents yeah. and i was watching that mashuga like mouth open like couldn't believe what i was watching it was my first time seeing them at night i'd only seen them play like they played a festival in north carolina during the day which is like still sick, but it doesn't do it justice. The light show, the big things yeah. that they got, whatever they call They're like scrims, but cooler, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, nobody wants to call them scrims because of how cool they are. But yeah, because of <laughs> scrims of 2010. Yeah. But like, and they change them like halfway through the set. Yeah. Don't they? Like, like pull yeah. them out and shit. That shit's like cool. a play. Like people in all black come out and swap them out. But they did that interlude, like the Minds Mirrors interlude. I was like legitimately scared. Boom. Yeah. I was sitting there watching it like this is terrifying music. Yeah. It was life changing. But but yeah, that is what sold me on in ears and and it's so cool. Like seeing a video of us and like Paxson got so like comfortable with doing click offs that he would do click offs that we probably didn't even need. You know yeah. what I mean? And it always like irked me. Like if we had like a really small like dun dun he would go dun. Dun. no get rid of that yeah so like all of it's gone it's just like very like abrasive which is just like my main goal for knocked loose is just like abrasive god i can't wait to see you again i haven't seen you in, i haven't seen you since blue ridge i haven't seen yeah. you since click since yeah. no count offs dude i wish you could have seen us at this last blue ridge where we were the only day that happened because friday and sunday were completely rained out you played again two years ago. Saturday, yeah. And it was like potentially one of the biggest like festival crowds we've ever played to. Like it was like too big. <laughs> like right, bigger than Coachella. Yeah, because we were in a tent. So like oh, the tent was capped. Like yeah, at Coachella, okay. they literally had to stop letting people in. But like Not Fest Iowa, probably the biggest show I've ever played. They said that it sold like 30,000 tickets and we probably really, and it's two stages side by side. So you're playing to everybody. Playing to 30, we okay. played midday. So if I had to guess 15,000, maybe the biggest that we've ever played. That's not Blue Ridge looked similar. I don't know how many tickets they sold or anything, but I just remember being like, dude, it's like one of those videos you see on the internet of 
metal bands playing fests and you're like the crowd just doesn't end yeah like old machine head videos yeah machine head monsters of rock yeah shit like dude that. machine head dynamo yeah it's one of my favorite it's one of my favorite live videos of a band ever they all look so fucking 90s dude, in it it's the coolest shit the ever. drummer and the singer wearing matching chromags windbreakers yeah. he has fucking cornrows <laughs> and a black eye it's fucking dude, my, so hard my brother's on tour with machine head right now really yeah Do him, what? gates gates to hell is the band that trey plays drums for now they're opening it's uh gates to hell fear factory machine head and uh there's wow. a there's another opener I, I don't remember the name but yeah and i got to do uh is his name rob flynn yeah i got to do his podcast and i wanted to ask him about the video so bad but but he was very good about like asking me questions that i i didn't really feel an appropriate time to just be like will you tell me about the day oh you should have <laughs> done it like will you just tell me about like why did you have a black eye will you tell me about all the dudes and like all the like skinhead dudes pitting side stage yeah the like, side stage shit it's such a cool video the uh oh you should have topsy turvied that podcast and just been like yeah i'm bad at podcasting i have like notes and shit but i'm normally just like what's up what's going on <laughs> like i got notes guess what professional one of them's about coachella yeah <laughs> how the fuck did that happen dude i don't know how, i still don't really know how it happened to the way that it did like we got hit up about coachella we were on tour and like vitalo hit me up uh but vitalo's our manager um, Legend. you know that yep. but um he hit me up and was like we got an offer offer for coachella and i was like i'll tell you right now we're saying yes like we we obviously will hit the band group chat but like nobody's gonna say no to this and he was just like um yeah he was like even if it was like a dog shit offer like i would urge you to say yes was it dog shit no, um, to tell me the number i really to, i don't think that it was like uh it definitely wasn't dog shit i don't think that it was like groundbreaking or anything but it, it but like i'm the wrong person to ask because when i get asked i don't ever really talk about the offer i'd just want to talk about the show you know yeah, what i mean it's coach out i'm fucking doing it yeah pay me a bag of fucking peanuts yeah like and that's pretty much how it is across the board like do you guys want to do this tour yes okay cool this is what the offer is yeah. you know what i mean i trust that like we have people in place to handle those and like yeah vitalo's fucking so clever yeah. he's not gonna be like he's not gonna throw me to the wolves but so we accepted coachella and then leading up to it we were all just excited but then like week of i was like dude i'm anxious like how is this gonna go and all of us had talked about it i feel like i have an eyelash all of us talked about it and we were like it's either going to be dead and awkward or it's going to be like a festival set like danny wimmer outdoor like festival set and then <clears throat> we showed up and I think all of us were just excited to hang out because we weren't touring a lot last year. So we were in our own world, like chilling, hanging out. And then our TM was like, let's go check out the stage. And we walked over there. We walked into the tent and there's no barricade. And I was like, oh, they're just setting up for the day. Like, there's no way there's no barricade. Uh, they just weren't ready. Dude, the stage manager came over to me wearing like a Los Crudos hardcore shirt. And he had like the marauder braids and he immediately like introduces himself and he's just like yo we're really excited for you guys it's gonna be crazy and i was like oh shit like they know yeah and i was like i couldn't believe there was no barricade and then before the set like dude vital is like so antsy and we're all getting so nervous and we're and um we're getting ready and we're stretching and you can see him kind of pacing and he's like poking his head in there and he's coming back and telling Colin like it's empty it's empty and then he's poking his head in there and he's just like yeah I mean it's not that crazy and then like five minutes before we go on he pokes his head in there and he comes out and he goes it's fucking packed and he's like let's go and I was just like shit dude and um yeah and then it was like as crazy as it was the videos I don't know were if fucking you can nuts. I woke put up put that it. video that Colin Feeney posted. I don't know if you can like. <laughs> we can have that. We can have that. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll but, pop that in there.
but it was like it was uh the song deep in the willow that we later released before it was out and dude it was just insane and what's crazy is the second weekend was cooler and they didn't stream it but like what everybody tells you about coachella which i guess is true is like weekend one is the influencers and the celebrities and the people that want the photo op so like the festival's great but then weekend two the tickets are there for the fans of music i didn't know that so like weekend one sells out and then people like and so weekend two was just crazier and i was like there's no way it's gonna top weekend one and then it did and it was just like but there was no like streaming footage no because they kind of flip-flop who's set is going to be streamed and we played at the same time as willow which is insane to say so her set got streamed the second weekend and um we actually walked past will smith and Amazing. it was like it, it's definitely the the most like the biggest celebrity i've ever seen in real life but like our entire group like crew and band is and and guest list is all walking to catering and will smith and Jaden and willow and some security guards walk past us and like in a row i'm kind of in the front of the group and you can see our entire group in a row notice and go <laughs> as he walked past <laughs> like just couldn't believe um yeah it was sick and then later on that year playing bonnaroo yeah. as well and it was like well this can't be as good as coachella and then it was like i don't know if i can say better but it was definitely as good it was just like chaos right back in the olden days you had a guitar, right? Little strings, bing, plong, plong. There was like two songs. Kumbaya was one of them. A Beatles song was the other one. I can't remember. But basically now you don't have to do that anymore because the lovely people at Neural DSP have created plugins. So you can just plug that guitar straight into your computer and you can sound like Gojira. You can sound like Tim Henson, Tom Morello. Let's say you are a little bit dimmer than the rest of us and your strings are thicker and you perhaps only have four of them. Yes, that's right, you're a bassist. Well, guess what? You can get bone crushing, I said bone crushing, bass tones with the Dark Glass Ultra Pack. Just that slapping low end, I won't really wanna say slap at the bass, but I'm not gonna do it. NeuralDSP.com, use the code DOWNBEAT, you can get 30% off anything I mentioned, any plugin, 30% off. Just go, make your tone sound good. You like Nolly? You can sound like Nolly. I love Nolly. NeuralDSP.com, the code is downbeat. Also, speaking of the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash downbeat, it's only one pound. You get early access to episodes, you get early access to merch, you get early access to drops like this collaboration vinyl. What more could you want? Patreon.com forward slash downbeat. If you don't want to support me at all, but you do want to look good wearing some clothes, www.thedownbe.at you can get some merch hoodies new stuff two locations one ships from la one ships from the uk fast shipping loads of stuff check it out do you get any shit for it I like heart like i'm not in hardcore when i was a kid i was in hardcore now i'm not i don't ever yeah. pro profess to be in the hardcore or whatever but like sometimes they're dogging on bands for stuff like that and sometimes they're not i don't know really if we did if we did i didn't really see it i, feel I didn't like, see it i just saw everyone like this is the fucking best yeah. thing ever and i was like oh cool yeah i think that when um when we started to kind of like get attention we were very polarizing when it came to like hardcore metalcore, that whole like never ending argument. Mm. And I think that like, I, I literally watched it flip where like all the people that hated on us and were so bothered by our existence over the years, they all came back around and it still happens to this day where like, we'll do something and somebody will say something to me or they'll say something about knocked loose uh like giving us props or giving us our flowers and i'm just like i remember mm. like, i remember what you said and i don't care if you don't like us or whatever i also don't care that you now pretend to like us 
Like I don't need that validation, but there's like points in Knocked Loose's history where I can say like us playing This Is Hardcore, a lot of people came back around. They were like, oh, okay. Us taking Terror out, people were like, oh, okay. Same with like uh, us taking Candy out. I mean, you guys bring out like real, like obviously not including Terror, but like real small fucking hardcore bands all the time. Yeah. Just because that's what we like, you know? Yeah, you've always got like... It was it, never to like pander. No, no, it's always some fucking mad band that you guys are into. Who's on this UK run? Headbusser. Yeah, French band. How did that come about? You just like the band? We like the band and also... Dude, the UK has so many good bands. And every time we do Europe in the UK, we take a UK band. Every time, like... Demonst like we haven't taken demonstration of power but like amazing band static dress um last wishes despise like it's always us malevolence like so isaac straight up was just like dude we have to take a european band <laughs> and he like sent a list of bands that he was messing with and i was like oh i like that head bus a band um and they were down to do it so i'm really excited and i'm also excited because day one is paris which Fuck is a yeah. hometown show for them so that'll like really set the tone for the tour it's such a fucking great lineup i'm like i'm stoked we're doing this because i'm not here for it because i'm doing stuff for australia in the oh, States, yeah. so i'm gonna miss it but like death heaven is one of my fucking favorite bands and i'm excited to see what the fucking pit is gonna be like yeah <laughs> between the three bands yeah because it's gonna be like fucking heavy moshing and then i don't know yeah more heavy moshing I, I i really like that though and we've been doing that a lot like the last time we did the uk we did despise choir boy knocked loose i don't know if you've listened to choir boy no. it's like 80 synth goth like sick i mean yeah it's just like i'm mean, not a like distorted instrument on the entire record um and then when we did the us we did Kublai Khan movements so it's just like I like that I like a mixed bill I like to keep things interesting but then also if you think about it it's kind of just setting yourself up for a crazy set because like the deaf heaven set is just not going to look as crazy as our set no matter what you and know it's what I mean? gonna it, it gives you can't expect I found it when we do a tour and it's stacked you can't expect people to be moshing for that long yeah if there's no like break in the thing yeah like i can't i i was explaining it I can't, we like timed our set and the band before us and someone was like annoyed was like why aren't they going nuts for the whole set and i was like it's 95 yeah. minutes that's shrek 2 <laughs> you ever put shrek 2 on and mosh for the whole fucking thing no you don't <laughs> yeah it's like i mean especially like creating a headliner you have to play longer so you just know that like it can't be hits only so you're creating a set that kind of does this it like ebbs and flows and like a lot of bands mess up and put like Kublai Khan as direct that's like the scariest thing you can do as I've a heavy it. band like and, and I love Kublai Khan and I want them to succeed. Like I've, you know me, like I've never ever viewed this as a competition. When we had them on our tour, like there were definitely nights that they had better sets than us. And like, I love that. I'm rooting for them. But I was just like, this band is like maybe the most underrated band, like live band in like our generation of heavy bands. Like they just absolutely demolish every single show that so they play much. but you don't want to play after them you don't e even if your band is on paper bigger you don't want Doesn't to fucking play yeah. after them their music is written for a response you yeah. know what i mean it's like scientifically made to respond to um i saw them support stick to your guns on that run Whew, it was rough <laughs> it was fucking rough after kubla Khan. dude we played a uh, in albany we showed up and we were like oh there's no barricade because like Nowadays, it's getting more and more rare to play a no barricade show on a knocked loose headliner. Um, we we're like, oh, there's no barricade. Let's go. 
And Kublicon just like smoked the whole bill. And like we were stoked. We were diving for Kublicon, you know what I mean? But I was just like, geez, bro. You want a direct support that'll make you sweat, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. you don't want a direct support that's gonna like smoke, smoke you. you. Yeah. And Deaf Heaven, like I love Deaf Heaven. Same. Um, I think it's such a cool idea and I like I'm kicking myself because I pride myself, me and Isaac, on like we're big on the shows that we play. We create them from the ground up. Like me and Vitalo go over a list of venues and lists of cities and we pitch bands and blah, blah, blah. But Deaf Heaven was Vitalo's idea. And, and he said it to me and I was like, that's brilliant. That's a great idea. Like if you think they'd be into it, yeah, like hit them up. So what happened though? They, they're getting announced for it real late in the game. Like the tour is in two months. Yeah, we, we just wanted like a, we, we announced it just us yeah. a couple weeks ago. And we just wanted to like kind of spread out the excitement. Like yeah. you announce a tour and then it kind of just like dies until the tour happens again. But this was just a way to like have two announcements for the same tour. And also in the back, anyone listening who loves music business in the like back end of it, you can see, okay, well we did this many tickets immediately. Yeah. Yeah. So and you like, can gauge your markets. Yeah. And we're definitely not as like, um, we definitely don't do as well in, in Europe as we do in the U S. So it was kind of like, why do you mean that? I just don't think that we did it right for a long time. And then since the pandemic, I don't think we've properly done it at all. What do you mean by not do it right? Like when we first started touring in Europe, our first tour ever over there was with Counterparts and it was amazing. And it was like exactly it. the kind of tour that we should have done. It's It was like reasonably sized rooms with no barricade. Underworld, London. Underworld, yeah. yeah like, And it was awesome. And then we went straight from that to the world of like we supported Parkway and it was just like there's not enough groundwork for us in Europe yet to support on a package like that. Because like, if you open that show, you're eating shit. You're playing yeah. 30 minutes after doors in a 7,000 cap room. You don't have a green room. <laughs> like, So you don't actually even get anything from it other than being like, yeah, we're supporting Parkway. We, we played in Poland to people sitting on the ground on their phones. Ugh. And I just remember being like, we talk about that tour now and say like if at any point somebody just spoke up and said should we go home every person would have been like yep <laughs> <laughs> so stuff like that we did like a bunch of like the empiricon and like mm -hmm. no diss to empiricon but it's just like it's us and <laughs> 10 bands that we don't really like like 10 bands we wouldn't normally tour with yeah and then we literally, um, I think it was 2019, it was to prepare for a different shade of blue. I was just like, dude, we got to reapproach. And me and Isaac and Vitalo were like, dude, we're starting from scratch. I don't care if we're playing house shows. Like I want to play the smallest rooms. I want to go with people that I'm friends with. And even if the shows are bad, at least I'm with friends. So we did a tour and it was uh, Kubicon. Cruel Hand, and then a band from Australia, Caged Existence. They were a band for a very short period of time. So we did that, and the tour was so sick. And, it, like, every show was cool, small rooms, people going off. Um, so then A Different Shade of Blue came out, and we went to go back to Europe, and we were like, same vibe, like, bigger rooms, but let's not overshoot it, and let's take a package that we like. And that was Justice for the Damned, Renounced, Malevolence, Us. And it was like an amazing tour. That, that was when we just fucking sick. That was when we played that show with you all in Bristol. That show was unbelievable. Yeah. That flyer is going to get dug up in like 20 years and people are going to be like, I can't believe this exists. It, who was it? It was like, it was Stray, Prada, Prada, Loathe, um, Malevolence, Malevolence, Renounce, Justice for the Damned, Not Us. Loose. Didn't you all have an opener on your tour? Gideon. Gideon, yeah, you're We're right. Fucking complete. That is such an insane lineup. Yeah, and one day, what eighteen hundred people? Mm. So sick. Well, we sold that venue out on our last headliner. 
so sick fucking crazy yeah, like, to be I, back there without that lineup and be like wait we just fucking sold this yeah. out yeah i think tom told me that like that yeah. you were going for that venue you and me got coffee that day that was when i told you i like coffee now yep i remember <laughs> it who were we with um, it was just you me and um what's his name photographer guy elliot elliot yeah yeah apologies there my, my mind went blank but um, yeah that tour was great and we were like okay we like europe now and then the pandemic hit and the pandemic hit the day that we were supposed to fly to europe um to do mad ball harm's way because it was like after doing two of our own tours let's do a hardcore support tour it hit the day you were going to leave the day that we were going to leave was the day that they shut the borders down so so you got lucky you didn't dude I mean, yeah not lucky because the flights yeah. were definitely booked. <laughs> yeah i mean my my bags were packed it was like taylor and i were headed to the airport in an hour and vital called us and was just like tours canceled and i immediately got in my car me and taylor picked up dallas and trey my brothers and we drove two hours to indianapolis to see terror kublikon magnitude restraining order <laughs> literally we're just like tours canceled let's go to a let's show, to a show. <laughs> yeah. probably the last show we see for a fucking minute yeah and it was um but then since touring has come back i feel like um we haven't really toured europe the right way we did like dude the festival summer i'm just like not a fan of really the festivals are so cool but it's just like the are, drives are crazy are you doing it in a van okay we did it wasn't last year last year we did it i'll get to that so two years ago it was our first europe tour after the pandemic it was in it was full festival summer and i was just like dude we can't do a van because festival summer is brutal i'll never do it again and vitala was like it's this thing that's it's called like a nightliner and he's like, it's not a van, but it's not a bus. It's not a bandwagon. It's kind of just like a camper. And I was just like, if there's a bunk, whatever. We show up, no AC. I know exactly which one it is. Dude. Is it the little gray one? Yeah. Oh, we did that fucking two. Oh, we did that not last year. Oh, we did it last year on a underplay. Dude. No window. No windows. Driver it that looks like a... Uh, they got a lovely fucking our driver guy. was a, a a woman um her name was marta not the same driver then we we didn't talk to her much she was nice so this is no this isn't making fun of her it's just making jokes about her we were like oh our driver's a vampire because right. she sleeps during the day and she drives at night and one day um we were like, oh, yeah, Marta, she's a vampire. She sleeps upside down, like, whatever, whatever. One day, there's catering to-go boxes. And I ask our tour manager, like, which one's mine? He's like, all of these are your alls. This is my vegan one. And then this one's Marta's. Please don't eat it um, because of her allergies. And we are like, what is she allergic to? He said, fucking garlic. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, she's a vampire. <laughs> oh, so you did that, and then you never wanted to do it again? Dude, I mean, Wait, have fest. you done one since? yeah so but on that tour hellfest 110 degrees in paris or in france wherever it's at we play at noon and it's just like it's 115 degrees in our ride yeah and then we have no green room because it's like you have a green room for an, the hour that before you play and 10 minutes after you play because so-and-so needs to practice like yeah. deep purple or whoever headlined <laughs> and so it was so hot they shut catering down oh that's yeah and rough. like it's hellfest so they cover everything in black like like these chairs because they want it to look like hell Both, i guess it's but it's just absorbing heat just roasting i remember i i uh squirted hand sanitizer on my hand and it like burned <laughs> Just it was hot, so like hot, hot yeah because it's in a it's in a it was in a hot black metal tin just cooking cooking and like i was just like dude i'm never coming to europe again in my for the rest of my life there is one company and tom's got the hookup so get vitality to speak to tom there's one company that makes those nightliners and they're actually sick so we've done those three times yeah one sucked 
One was okay and one was awesome. It was yeah. literally like half a bus. Well, we we did. You're big enough to do a full bus on your own. Come we on. just did that. Yeah. 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 So so we did last summer. We did a bunch of festivals, and I was just like, whatever we have to do to avoid that camper. Yeah, I'll pay. And, I'll play for free. Yeah, just. and it was also the first time we had ever taken a sound guy. In wow, Europe. only last year. Yeah. I'm telling you we just did it wrong for a long time that's pretty wrong though. um just because knocked loose is infamous for like taking the appropriate like growing steps a step too late you know what i mean like we were doing lights taking our own lighting packages but it was like taylor learning how to rig i remember when you picked it up because we were at wheel punties yeah you just driven halfway across the country to pick up a bunch of lights yeah that's another yeah like we didn't ship them i drove 18 hours to pick them up <laughs> yeah. like just shit like that is like us trying i feel like we're just it's like painfully trying to hold on to the diy aspect of it where it's like now especially for the u.s it's like let's do this comfortably you know what i mean yeah but you know what's funny about that is though you were holding on to the DIY aspect of it too much. You're like, you're, you're oh, we're going to lights now. Okay, so it's slightly less DIY, but let's do it ourselves. <laughs> yeah. It's just still yeah. fully fucking DIY. Dude, we, the, not that lighting package, but there was a lighting package when we did that tour right before the pandemic, and it was us, stick to your guns, rotting out candy, see you, space cowboy. Um, great tour as yeah, well. Yeah, great tour, but we rented a lighting package and it had, two 10 foot trusses that taylor just like built every day like she got to the venue and she just had these massive weighted bases and she's like fucking screwing in these trusses and then she's climbing the trusses and hanging fixtures on them and it's just like that's fucking awesome though. and then she's doing the show you know what i mean so we were just like yeah maybe we take a lighting tech <laughs> you know what i mean is she is she still doing lights yeah, so she's that's fucking. She's sick. always done lights and merch. We're at the point now where, like, depending on the tour, because like we did those that rap tour last year with Suicide Boys. Yeah, that was vendor sale, vendor sale every day. So that's basically her just like doing the numbers at night and just dropping merch off, um, so she could do lights. But if it's a tour where she's like physically selling we hire her an assistant on both sides she has a merch tech and a lighting tech someone to build the stage someone to stock the merch they both sell someone can be at the table if she has to go to the truck and restock and then someone can be at the table while she's actually performing the show because a lot of people buy merch while you're playing which is so weird that is fucking weird. yeah well at those kind of shows yeah I love this. I'm going to stop watching it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking nuts. Um, oh, I did. I saw you. I saw you twice that year. Was that last year? Was that the year before? I saw you were Bring Me. Oh, yeah. Last year. That was last year. And then. Same thing. That was like vendor sell every day. Um, but that was pretty limited on what we were allowed to bring production wise because their show was so big, you know? God, I saw them last week. It's even bigger now. Dude, fucking, I want to see it so it's bad. It's incredible. It looks like Doom. I wish I could have seen the download set. I heard it was just like legendary. So the download set set up is what I just saw them do oh, in okay. the arenas. The, the fucking LED screen that so looks like sick. a Doom level. Yeah. Like all that fucking shit. I love that um, Ollie um, posted the picture on his Instagram of a drawing. And yeah. the next slide was them live. I was like, dude, I'd do that. Like, I just draw on my iPad and then I'm just like, build it. But I mean, granted, our show is like not even a quarter of that size, but it's just so cool to see the attention to detail. And like, yeah, I was, when we were in uh, Bloodstock, I talked to Cam about it a lot because I was just like, he was like telling me about, dude, the pyro on top of the download stage it was yeah. like so crazy. They had to have somebody radio in the fucking air traffic control and let them know when they were going to blow fire it's fucking amazing yeah yeah the, the the doodle that ollie did and then like that transferring to the stage show all that shit like i love how hands-on he is with that yeah desperate to get him fucking here but i ain't gonna sweat him i mm -hmm. once got told 
he was up for doing it and someone gave me his email ghosted me dude i've i've always heard that the, that they're all like great dudes and but i've heard that they're like pretty shy and i've also heard that they're like very reserved um and dude w i i can't confirm this but i can comfortably say that we wouldn't have gotten that tour if it wasn't for stevis really um, because he's really close with them and he's really close with me as well and he said that he was hanging out with them and they were like they brought us up and he was like you all should take them on tour and they were like they're way too cool for us and stevis was like dude they're not like that at all like they love everything and i promised they would do it and they're probably fans and blah 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 um and then like no joke a couple months later we got that offer it's so weird how we all think like that like i assume everyone yeah. hates me and hates my band even with bring me when i went to the show last week i obviously posted a video that was there and i was you know I was backstage but talking to static dress like yeah. seeing them or whatever P obviously posted i was up there and i was like because ah, uh jj that plays session guitar from yeah. bring me was in viatrophy when my death call band with yeah. me like fucking when we were Sick. kids so i was like ah do i go back nah i don't want to be that guy like i'm fucking maybe yeah. they hate me maybe i'm not I'm cool the enough same way. and then i got home and like nichols had messaged me and was just like oh you should have come and say hi and i was like oh. yeah <laughs> just assume everyone doesn't fuck with me well, dude so we did the tour and we started it and i was like i don't know what the vibe's gonna be like like i've heard they're they're dope but i've also heard they're shy so like on tours like that i'm just like all of knock loose we're just like out of the way you know what i mean like we're not trying to step on anybody's toes or break any rules or whatever whatever so like we stick to ourselves until you open the door then we'll be your best friend um so like a couple days went by and we had met everybody i hadn't met ollie yet and then vital hits me and he's like yo are you interested in doing an interview they want you and ollie to interview together and I was like, oh, cool, that'll break the ice. And um, that was my, like, first time meeting him. We, like, sat and did an interview together where we just basically answered questions on, like, what it's like from my perspective only doing this 10 years and his perspective only doing, like, doing this however long Bring Me's been a band. Why are these people getting fucking interviews? Where am I fucking <laughs> yeah. interviews? I have to do this myself. <laughs> <laughs> but but you could definitely tell that they're, like, reserved. You know what I mean? And And... And I feel like, you know, in a way I can relate to that because of like how polarizing Knocked Loose was at first when it came to like hardcore specifically, mm. like you can tell that he was kind of just like, yeah, like we're not the cool band, but blah, blah. And it's just like, to me, you are, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like bring me is fucking cool. I've been a fan consistently since traders never play hangman. You know what I mean? Like. Even I wasn't a fan then. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was. And I wanted to, I never got close enough with him, but I wanted to, uh, I sent it to Stevis. When I was in like middle school, I fucking drew a picture of him from my art class. Really? And, and I like, I was like, mom, I know you have like a trunk of all that shit. Can you find that? She found it and sent it to me. And I was just like, one, the picture is can you Dog find that shit. and send it to me i will try yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> i would fucking love that that's so cute though <laughs> yeah i forget how young you are how old are you i'm 30 that's not young yeah <laughs> you're not young anymore you're yeah. dripped out i've just seen the drip as well you got you. stone island you got the solomon's yeah. on <laughs> the gorp core respect new album new single yeah new album new single what's the album called i don't even fucking know because you told me today the album is called you won't go before you're supposed to what does that mean long moody title <laughs> <laughs> That's no it. It, it's uh it, it is a lyric on the record there's no like title track it kind of it was a bunch of ideas kind of like uh wrapped into one um was thinking a lot about like an album name and i was thinking about art first and originally i was like what if we went the route of um no text um like just a photo you know what i mean just a graphic and then i i had that album name kind of just like fall into my lap it was actually like a quote from a stranger to me um and i thought that it was like really like dark and in like a weird way it was like in reference to death 
to be completely transparent, it was in reference to a fear of flying that I have. Like I'm very, very afraid of flying. Really? Yeah. And, and I, on a plane, I was sat next to a stranger and not, I'll make a very long story story shorter. I won't make it short because it's still going to be kind of long, but I did this flight that was like nightmare flight. And <clears throat> when it I, so it was like pouring down rain, flooding, I had to fly. It was like day of emergency. I had to get home. Um, I'm already kind of panicked because I know the flight's going to be rough just because of the weather. I get to the airport. Every flight is delayed. So I sit in the airport for about four hours. I hear them boarding a flight to another place, not even where I'm going, just the general direction. And I'm like, I could get on that flight and I could rent a car and drive home. Me and Taylor go over there and to the gate and we're just like, can we get on this flight? And they're just like, sure. And we're like, what? okay, yeah, I don't know. The woman at the counter was even like, which flight were you going to be on? I'll go get your bags myself. Um, she went and In got our bags. Post 9-11 world, you're yeah. allowed to do that. Yeah. Fuck, <laughs> fair play. So we get on, we're seat one and two. Um, this woman, these two women and their mother, um, like elderly woman, come onto the plane and the, the elderly woman's kind of like having a hard time walking. And I hear the one woman kind of saying like, sorry, like the delays, we just sat for so long, like her joints are really locked up. So I like got up and was like, here, she can have my seat. Uh, I'm row one. And the stewardess was like, oh, um, she can't sit there because it's an exit row and you have to be willing to help. And I, and I, I like try, I'm very, oh, like self-aware of like, I'm never rude to workers, even, yeah. even if they're like so mean, like I just brush it off. I've got like a very high tolerance for that. But I remember being like, dude, there's six people here five of them can help like let this woman sit down <laughs> yeah and they were just like it's the policy so i was like whatever so i sat down luckily the woman was only row two and i didn't know that before i made such a scene i didn't make a scene but in my head i'm just like wow i just yeah, embarrassed yeah. myself anyway so her daughter is next to her her other daughter is next to me um the flight is like the oldest plane running like cigarette ashtrays oh no nice. my my Mad shade shit. yeah my shade doesn't work my seat is broken it's just reclined and won't sit up i'm nice 80s print on it yeah i'm fully panicking i have like noise canceling headphones to meditate on flights so i have them on i'm meditating i'm like doing breathing exercises um uh, and the stewardess is like, you can't listen to your headphones during takeoff. And I was like, what? Like, I was like, what do you mean? I was like, I take 300 flights a year. Like, and she was just like, it's the rules. So I just took my headphones off and I'm sitting there like freaking out. And we start speeding down the runway. And like, while we're speeding down the runway, the woman next to me is like, where are you going? And I was like, I'm like this. I'm like, uh, Florida. And she's just like, Oh, what for? And I'm like, work. I just like lied. Yeah, yeah. I was like, work. I was like, what are you going for? And she was like family reunion. And I was like, Oh, that's awesome. And like, dude, before you know it, we were in Florida, me and her talked the entire flight. And it was like, she felt it. And she just like distracted me. And it was like, crazy and and on the flight she was like i don't really like flying and i was like yeah me either and she was like uh i'm not scared of it or anything it's just like so exhausting and i was like i am scared of it and she was like oh really and she was like how often do you fly and i was like all year um and she just she literally went you won't go before you're supposed to and i was like I like pulled my phone out and wrote it down. <laughs> That's so sick. Yeah. And um, I, I I sat on it for a while. And then I remember we were on tour and we were in a bandwagon and the band was kind of talking. And I was just like, I have an idea. <clears throat> uh, 
I told them the name and they were just like, that's cool. I, they, they instantly responded. Well, they were like, I do really like that. And then I told them the story and they were like, well, that's the name, you know? Yeah. And then in my head, I was like, well, I'm already thinking of the art and I didn't really want text on it. So it can kind of get away with a longer album title. Cause you don't have to figure out how to make it how look to, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So our, like our graphic designer, uh, his name is Ridge. He's done everything since, um, the mistakes like fractures seven inch that came out before different shade of blue. Um, everything like website, merchandise, the cab covers, the backdrops, like anything that has our name on it, he's designed it. He's insane. And we had this photographer that we were really big fans of named uh, Briscoe Park. Who we've been following for a really long time, has a very distinct style. And I was like, this style is like perfect. And we ended up finding a photo of his that we thought was so cool. We we're like, what if this was the photo? And uh, got in contact with the photographer and they were just like, I would love to work with you. I would, I'm down for anything. However, this photo is out and I've sold prints of it and like people have it. And like, so I was just like, you're right. Um, so from there it was kind of like starting from scratch but now knowing that the photo the photographer's on board. So Ridge kind of designed something on his own and was like, what about this? And I was like, this is awesome. It, it looks a little bit too like computer made. What if we just get Briscoe to come to you and shoot this? So like build the entire set and take the photo. Um, so it kind of ended up being like best of both worlds. We could still have Ridge involved and then also introduce like this guy's style that, that we're such a fan of. It's crazy how yeah. that works, isn't it? When you, when you see something and you just know and you're like, this is it. This is what I want. Yeah. And we had, when we did euthanasia, like I was like, it just needs to be, I'm sick of the world. I want to press a button to end the world. And we were like, well, how, how do we do that? And then we were looking at like, building a fucking button and all this stuff yeah. and i was like it just needs to look like a nuclear reactor and then i found this picture of an actual button to stop a nuclear reactor yeah. and then we just hit the guy up and was like how much money yeah. do we need to give you to use your photo yeah and he was like i think it was quite expensive but like that was like a tear in the fabric of life um the picture of the girl like doing the back bend yeah ridge and i worked so for so long on that art and if you own the vinyl you've seen this but the the slip mat that the record actually is inside of is this very like messy noisy painting that kind of looks like something converge would do it's super cool that originally was the cover and then i was like this might be like too like left field for us aesthetically um it, it kind of just looks looks like mud you know what i mean and we started playing around with other things he sent me that photo and i was just like this is it and he was like it's not my photo so he had a model go and they did the photo shoot they tried to mimic it i was just like it's not the same so we had to track down this how where this photo came from and it, we found this person's Flickr account that was like, they're not even a photographer. It was just a ballet pose. But the way that Ridge edited it made it look so creepy and dark that we like hit them up and, and, I'm, and they were like, you can use it, just send me a copy of the record. And we were just like, done. Sick. Yeah, they just wanted to see like their work in a, on a record, you know? I think we had the guy come back with the euthanasia thing because he was just like, I think his first amount that he asked for was like, just doesn't know anything about me. He was like, <laughs> oh, a rock band, oh, a million dollars. It was like something <laughs> fucking insane. It was like, come on, bro, we'll give you fucking two grand or whatever it yeah. was. Lead single. Blinding Faith. Thank you. I was literally putting my notes up. Yeah. I listened to it this morning. Love it. Yeah. So fucking good. My, my, uh, regretfully say my first ever recorded low it was well, near the end yeah it's fucking awesome dude isaac's been begging me it's definitely you can tell it's you as well i was like that's not isaac it gets brought up a lot and then when this record came isaac was like this is the record like you have to do it and i was just like nah like 
I have a style, like whatever. And, um, and then we wrote that part and he, spe Isaac specifically, um, referenced with blood comes cleansing. Cause he knew that that would get me. And he was just like, you got to do a pig squeal on this. And I was just like, dude. And then like, I recorded a demo of it and I was like, I don't know if I like it. And then figuring out the line, the one liner of, cause it goes Nico, Isaac, me, which is what I think is so cool. Oh, does it? Nico saying bend the knee, Isaac saying child of God. Once I've figured out the bend the knee child of God, I was just like, all right, this is terrifying. <laughs> and I, I was in LA working with Drew Folk. They were already at home. So I'm like, Nico, go to Isaac's and record bend the knee. And then Isaac record child of God and send it to me and heard it back. And I was just like, all right, this is it. Like, this is crazy. Isaac kept making fun of me. Like, I'd be like, I don't want to do it. And he'd be like, oh, I guess you hate going viral. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good Isaac impression yeah. as well. <laughs> With the movement. Yeah. Um, I mean, by this point, it'll be out. I mean, is it... So it's obviously about I'm going to take a stab in the dark Christianity. Yeah. And I think that that's really important. It's a, it's like, it's about Christianity. It's not about God. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, and, I got, I got it. And every, every single knocked loose record, there's a God song and it's always, um, kind of like focused around the same thing. Just like religion. I feel like religion is the worst thing that ever happened to God. Mm -hmm. and, but it's also funny because every record I kind of like push push the one liner to be like more and more like edgy anti religion or anti God like the gospel was our first one mistakes like fractures I say like God fell silent um, the song God knows off the EP and then this one is kind of just like a compilation of like evil one liners like the word becomes the law and saying, I deny the church. Like, just like, yeah, it sounds like a fucking day aside. Song. Yeah. Like if you just look at the lyrics, it's like, Oh, it's Glenn. Beck. Yeah. And then when it came to, I didn't think that that would be a single. It was, Isaac was really pushing for it. You didn't because last week I was told it was a different. Single. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isaac always knows something that I don't know. And I think this is another example of how him and I work so well because we really are on the same page 90% of the time. But every record we've ever done, he's always had a different single idea than me. And what's funny is different shade of blue, he wanted trapped in the grasp of a memory. And I remember being like, dude, no, it's not a single. And then that is like one of our favorite songs to play live and one of the like biggest songs to play live. I'm just like, all right, you knew something that yeah. definitely going with him on this one. Like we decided to go this route and when it came to doing a video, like I'm like, uh, so hands on with like the video stuff that we do now, especially now that I was just like, all right, I mean, we could go directly on the nose with this video and it would just be a scary movie. You know what I mean? So like, uh, I created like a mood board of like all these like different influences. Um, and, uh, working with a director and we're just like yeah like haven't filmed it yet but so I'm trying to think of the timeline of like when this will be out this will be out when it's out okay so yeah the video will be out by then but currently the video doesn't exist yeah it's just kind of sick but i'm excited about it like i've been talking with the the director a lot it's a new director for us um, we did the last two videos with Eric Richter, which was like so much fun. Uh, but now it's just kind of like, let's see what else is out there. And we hired this guy that's never done a heavy video. He's done a lot of like really popular videos. What has he done? Like, uh, like soccer mommy. Uh, um, I'd have to look at it, look up the whole roster. But, but just like, like not heavy shit. Not heavy shit. And like he got me and Vitalo were like brainstorming people that we could, we could go to and Vitalo sent him. And, um, I was looking through his like reel, and I was like, this, like, 
aesthetically would work so well with us. So we reached out and he's like a huge fan. So I was just like, dude, easy. And him and I have just been like getting on the phone and just like word vomiting video ideas, you know, and like, where are you shooting at? Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah. Last one was uh champagne, Illinois. And I was just like, everything that we got from here, we could have gotten in Kentucky. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like the band aesthetically to be associated with the South. You know what I mean? There's always been kind of like country music Easter eggs in Knock Loose's music. So I was like, we can't do a song about religion and have palm trees in the background. You no, know I mean? yeah, you're right. Like we need those like, there's like churches out by like where we all grew up that's just like a 40 cap wooden building that has a weird cross on the top of it you know what i mean like yeah, those yeah. backwoods like fucking scary yeah. churches the churches where the the real bad shit yeah, actually happens. yeah exactly i could probably like in my head i'm seeing three of them that are less than 20 minutes from where my mom lives do you think that affects your view on religion is it is it born out of like any kind of growing up around that shit or is it just a general dislike i, th I think that it's um it's born from like i gave it a legitimate try when i was younger did you and, and got no results i i reached a point in my life where i was like i don't know what to believe and i feel like i was kind of like shown it's so like corny to say because I, I really don't want it attached to any sort of religion. But I felt like there were things that happened in my life where a God was undeniable. And I had this epiphany of like, okay, so I do believe in God. It's just like all the rules that you all attach to it that I like mm. don't fuck with. You know what I mean? I do believe in God. That doesn't mean I don't like beef him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. doesn't mean I don't always agree with him. But like, I... I did like church camp and I did church and like, I remember the first religious song I ever wrote the gospel. There's a, there's a line in it where I say like, love like that must cost an arm and a leg. Cause my tongue won't move no matter how hard I beg. It's like not really a metaphor. It's about like, I went to church camp. They did the like whole come up to the altar and like offer your, soul to god and jesus and and he will speak through you and you'll speak in tongues and like oh, oh wow yeah. like real and all these young kids went and spoke in tongues and like my cousin was one of them she like had like this experience and i remember i was just like i want that and i and, I, and apparently i need that if i'm if i'm gonna be like you all like that's like they they spoke about it like that was the if you're ready, he'll speak through you. So like, I remember all the kids leaving and me staying and just like crying and just being like, it's not happening. I I'm praying it's not happening. But actually you were just fucking not buying <laughs> Just it. normal. Yeah. yeah, just normal. That's fucking insane. I only, like, we don't have any shit like that in the UK. I only see that shit on like TV. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's weird. It's definitely weird to think back on. And I was just like a kid and I was just like fully drinking the Kool-Aid. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, and then, like, just through high school, like, I had a bunch of friends that were, like, heavily heavily into it. So I tried to go back to church, and I remember my best friend was killed by a drunk driver when I was in high school Fuck. in 2009. Um, and it was actually the driver of the car that she was in. So it was, like, somebody that went to our school, somebody that we knew. Oh, shit. Um, he didn't do a day of time for it. And he was always like, just like a fucking scumbag. Like he would come to school, like all fucked up, like no shoes. Like I remember one time a mutual friend of his invited my friends to skate with that crew. And we went and skated with them. And they, they just like did nothing but like pills and like barely even skated. And I was just like, this isn't really my shit. So when she started hanging out with him, I was like, this sucks. And I hung out with the three of them. He started drinking and I was just like, I got to go home. I left because I didn't want to be in the car with him drinking. That day they got into a wreck and, Fuck. and I was, I tried to tell her like, 
you got to leave him alone. A week later, he got into a wreck while she was driving. I mean, he was driving. She was in the passenger seat. He got into a wreck and she died. Shit. So he didn't do a day of time. I always knew him as like this like dirty scumbag. And one day I'm in church and I'm leaving church and I'm walking up steps. So I'm looking down at my feet and I hear like, hey, Brian. And I look up and it's him and he's in a suit. And I was just like, you're trying to like clean up. Mm. and i was just like if these people are going to accept you then i'm not a part of these people i he said like hey brian i looked at him i was in shock i didn't say a word i just kept walking but i was just like i'm never going to church again and that the, they prey on people like that as well obviously what he did was fucking bullshit but like that's another but like oh we'll forgive you come to us yeah yeah oh, anything's sucks. forgivable and like he ended up serving time i believe i know that he got caught like beating the crap out of his girlfriend wow guy sucks yeah and, He's and a, oh good christian then yeah <laughs> after that oh i've changed <laughs> yeah so i think that like after that he ended up doing time but yeah that was like that was my first not to get like so deep but that was my first time in my life like experiencing death like i had never had a family member or anything like i was like a junior in high school um so i was just at that point i was just like yeah i'm good on like church and if if i learned anything from church it was that i didn't need church to build a relationship with god like they tell you that you know what i mean so what's your what's your relationship with god now then or what do you perceive as god i don't know i just think that there's something i just don't like really pay attention to it or let it affect what i do that's how i feel like i used to be mad mad atheist and then like certain weird shits happen in my life where i'm like okay there's there's yeah. something here but not like i don't believe it's any of the written down by yeah a guy to control people versions of god yeah i'm just like i don't even know if he's like a good guy you know what i mean like I just think that there's something and, and I'm the same way. Like just things happened where I was just like, it's kind of undeniable. And, and one thing that I believe heavily when it comes to that is that like people have been placed in my life for a reason. And I just feel like there's like the woman on the plane, you know what I mean? Like that was like too strange. Like you could have started talking to me when we were in the air but it's like the most the most jolting part of a plane ride and you're trying to like have a normal ass conversation so i was just like that was she was like put there and and when when i was in high school and i was kind of like reapproaching the idea of religion my grandma had like a housing situation she had to move in with me and my mom and dad and my grandma is the only religious influence that my family has. Like my parents, if you ask them, they say, yeah, but like they've never gone to church. You know what I mean? So I'm like having all these like internal questions. And then all of a sudden my only like religious influence is now my roommate. So I'm like, okay, that, that is something that I can't deny. You know what I mean? It's fucking deep, heavy shit. But yeah. like we, we just don't have it. Like, we don't have it like you guys, particularly in the South. You guys fucking have it. You got anything you need to get out about the album that I don't know? There's two massive features on the album. Poppy. Amazing. And Chris Motionless. Amazing. Because Knocked Loose did Slaughterhouse Part 2. Yep. Oh my God. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Have you nodded to Slaughterhouse or have you just called it Slaughterhouse Part 2? Uh, definitely nodded to Slaughterhouse. So I got the idea because like I've seen like hardcore bands do it. Like, I know, like, Criminal Instinct has a song called Coward's Run. King Nine did a song called Coward's Run Part Two. And, like, they're not even featured. It's just, yeah. like, they're friends. Um, so my other band, Weapon X, did it. We did a split with World of Pleasure. And we did Domination Part Three because their first two demos had Domination One and Two. That's fucking cool. So I just thought that it was, like, such a cool vibe. And I had the idea of, like, oh, yeah, like, if we did Slaughterhouse Two... And I think that the band was just like, well, 
duh. Like that's an insane idea. Did you hit motion or something? I did. I was with Drew and I was like, do you think Chris would be down to do that? And this was before the tour with motionless. So I like didn't really know Chris personally yet. And he was just like, dude, yes, he would do that. He was like, I'll FaceTime him right now. And he FaceTimed him, like put him on the spot. Uh, but he was just like so stoked about the He's idea. Such a fucking nice guy. Yeah. Though, that band, one of the best bands I've ever fucking toured with. Dude, legitimately, like I, I pray that we get the opportunity to tour with them again. Same. Yeah. And like, because I didn't really know them before the tour at all. Yeah. I like knew Vinny's a shredder. Like Chris is like a fucking rock star. Yeah. Like didn't know anything. And like, I would see like little golf girls wearing motionless stuff so i'd just be like oh, i don't i don't think this is my shit or yeah. whatever and then like watch them on night one i'm like this is fucking Dude. so good knock loose like we there's like a small handful of bands that knock loose agrees on they have been one of them like since day one like since they like i've i remember me and my best friend jared baron shout out to him and we met in the eighth grade and we would just sit at at his grandma's and download music. And I remember finding motionless and white on MySpace when it was like just the EP. And I was like, Oh, like this is, they're named after an 18 vision song and they sound like bleeding through. It's like my shit. Um, and then I followed it to where they had like the 2010 where they sounded like 2010. Yeah. And I was like, I'm all about it. And then they kind of like started transitioning into like the active rock, like breaking Benjamin stuff. And I was just like, this is amazing. So like, not only did we want to do that tour just because of like, obviously how good it would be for Knocked Loose, yeah. but like we were just like all of us side stage every night, like singing along to the whole set. I was so gutted because we, I think this was pre us getting the Beartooth Motionless tour. We were in the running for that tour, that US one. And it was between us and Alpha Wolf and Alpha Wolf were just hotter. So it was Damn. like- I was good. I love yeah. Alpha Wolf as well, though. So. Yeah. But that it would have like, been great. I would have fucking loved that. Maybe we'll do it again. Yeah. Motionless in well, we Come on. We, we keep, uh, I mean, this is obviously in the balls in their court because they're much bigger than our yeah. bands. But we were just like, you won't survive the Slaughterhouse tour. Like, that's fucking come on. Like, so Do sick. you like money or what, dude? Yeah. And do it in Europe and <laughs> make it. <laughs> All three bands, thank you very much. Dude, I've got to say one thing about Slaughterhouse because it's the coolest Easter egg, and I don't In know... In your version of it? it? Both. Okay, go. And I don't know if they've ever said, if Chris has ever told this Easter egg, but I don't know like how familiar you are with the first one, but there's the part where... I played it on stage with them on that tour. Oh, so. sick. <laughs> so in the chorus the third chorus the vocal break where it goes i for yep. and i so that's drew folk no way yeah and he did it to show me a reference when i was doing my part and chris was like dude you sound great we should just keep you on here so in our song we do the eye for an eye and we literally copy and paste the same take. It's the same exact Drew Folk vocal take. That's amazing. He but just the song like is dropped different. it in. The song is different. Yeah, it's just like thematically about the same thing. And there's like nods to it lyrically. And then... That's so fucking awesome. That song is That's about as huge. much as I'd be willing to give up. Yeah. That song is going to be fucking huge. I love that. I love bands doing like cool shit with each other. I yeah, it's more so of that cool. Shit. Yeah um give me these two truths and a lie prepared okay earlier dude so you told me to prepare for this uh, you did i prepared two truths because i was like what's worth talking about yeah and i didn't prepare the lie so like in my head i'm trying to think of a lie right now you will not be the first person who did who's done that you may be the third person that's done it i didn't think of the lie and then when they fumbled the lie i'm like well that's obviously the fucking lie yeah i see this is what i'm worried about the first show i ever played was with the number 12 looks like you when soundproofing the knocked loose practice space i dropped a piece of wood on my toe and broke every bone in my big toe and when i was younger a dog almost ripped my eyeball out wow um wait what was the first one again you the first show i ever played was with the number 12 looks like you you know you're 30 years old 
you but you've been in music for a fucking minute you'd be young as fuck with that one the toe one off camera i just told you it could be about your toes <laughs> when you were thinking about a lie i'm gonna i'm gonna say the toe one is the lie yeah <laughs> but but the the toe one is you said that i could say one about someone else yeah it's about isaac he did that i did that to isaac how weird that i suggested it was about toes and yeah you ca you had a story straight away yeah we we were soundproofing the garage at his parents house and we were like covering the windows with like this thick soundproof wood and isaac and i were carrying it and we set it on like a windowsill sill and i thought that it was secure so i let it go and it fell on his big toe and just like demolished his toe like just crushed the bones into like pieces and he had to he had to have surgery and like once a year he has to have like the toenail removed and what it's still fucked yeah it's fucked forever wow yeah. when was that when did you do it um dude i mean we were yeah i mean this was probably 2013 so like the first year of us being a band maybe even before knocked loose was official we were just jamming a lot and you fucked his toe up forever yeah jesus uh tell me about the first show you played with the number 12 looks like you you must have been a child 2009 maybe 15 i guess 16 what was your band my band was awful what was it called <laughs> it had a bunch of names that is that are like so of the time it had, on. one of them was the number 12 looks like you. <laughs> uh, beneath the ashes nice uh, oh so it was a death call band it was like metalcore like on earth ba -ba 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 -ba. yeah oh, like on earth the it, black dahlia murder riff the yeah, Sevenfold but riff. With, but with like breakdowns um it had deaf to their cries was a name which easter egg is a lyric on a tear in the fabric of life nice yeah a little nod but it was just like garage band you know and we sold tickets yes. at our high school to open up for the number 12 looks like you i was the only one in the band that liked the number 12 looks like you they were very rude were they no <laughs> i think one of them was but i remember during our set they were all side stage working out working like like out a little, stage. Uh, like a little stage and they were off to the side like on the ground like doing like push-ups and jumping jacks and shit and i Weird. just remember being like they're watching us wow. but, but i remember one of them was mean to me one of them the singer was nice to me and i've actually talked about this on a podcast before and the singer like somebody sent it to the singer and he like dm'd me and was just like dude that's so awesome that like i had any part of like your history because knocked was so cool and i was like this is a crazy like full circle moment um because i like did i liked all that like weird like myspace stuff uh my parents went nice yeah my um, parents still come to shows yeah i cussed so much it was like the first time ever cussing in front of my parents and i'm like fuck this fucking place up and like your mom's cool though i see your mom on the internet yeah but i remember an older local band was just like yo you guys were great um you'll you'll probably be doing this for a long time he was like nobody wants to see a 15 year old cuss <laughs> well guess what that fucking work <laughs> yeah you're still doing it yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right what was the last one? Oh, the dog the dog eye story yeah when i was f four years old uh there were two dogs fighting and i tried to break it up because i didn't know any better but i like they were like hurting each other so i tried to break it up and one of them turned on me and like pounced on me i fell on my back and it just started like straight up chewing my eyeball oh my god that's a fucking nightmare how old were you like four four and i remember like i remember feeling its teeth like <laughs> yeah and <clears throat> i was alone so it, like the dog would have killed me like yeah. i literally was just a, like on my back screaming and like wiggling and finally i got my feet up underneath it and i kicked it off of me and it ran and I like walked to my house and I'm bleeding head to toe. All I can see is blood. And I just 
I remember I was crying. I guess my dad heard me. My dad like comes out the back door and he sees me. He's like runs and grabs me and he like puts me on the um, toilet and he's trying to clean me up, trying to like clean up the blood to see how bad the cuts are. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I remember I just said, the doggy took my eyeball. The doggy took my eyeball. <laughs> like, and, That's uh, so sad. Yeah. So they took me, he took me to the hospital. Um, they had to rush me to like a specialist. I had to get surgery. They basically had to like put my eyelid back together. Have you got any problems from it? Dude, no. Good for you. Yeah. Well and, and you know something that's crazy is like, so, so I had 60 stitches. Jesus I had Christ. 40 basically just putting my eyelid back on. And then I had 20 up here on my forehead. What kind of dogs were they? Dude, it was a beagle. <laughs> I'm sorry for yeah. laughing. I know, but I'm I mean, dude, I was four. I was four. <laughs> yeah. A, a, a beagle will fuck up a four-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It kind of makes it weirdly more savage, like a little evil beagle. Yeah. Fuck. But what's crazy is like when I was like a young teenager, like probably 13, um, I lived in an apartment complex. And behind the apartment complex, they were demolishing like a bunch of like woods to make a neighborhood so like i would just play on the construction site because that's like heaven for a kid and I, I was walking and like no joke i tripped and i landed on a stick that was sticking up out of the ground on the same eyeball how how much later was this i'm like 13 maybe fuck me it hits me like directly in my eye I like get up and I it it felt like when you have like an eyelash stuck in your eye, it was just really annoying and I couldn't get it to go away. And I like was I walked home and, and was like, I think there's something wrong with my eye and I opened it and it was just red, the entire thing. And they took me to the hospital and um I was always getting hurt when I was a kid. But in the I eye. Yeah. I it took a chunk out of my eyeball. And I had to take these like crazy eye drops that made my eye grow back, and That's I and insane. I still have no uh, got no issues, no problem, other than like a nervous tick where I blink really hard, and people love to talk about it in YouTube comments. Do they? Yeah, no, I, I, it's definitely I, like people have asked me about it because of interviews that I've done. It's just like a nervous thing, but like people have tagged me and stuff asking me if I have Tourette's, but. The first comment I ever saw about it, first interview I ever did, of course I watched it. And of course I read the comments because it was the first interview I ever did, and like the highest comment just said "boy be blinking hard af." <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. It is, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? You think that's from the eye injuries? No, I think that I'm just like a. I'm a pretty like reserved, like anxious person to a lot of people's surprise, you know, like I feel like a lot of people wouldn't assume that of me, but I'm like very quiet and monotone. And so like doing anything that kind of like the only thing I'm comfortable doing and receiving attention from is playing a show. So like anything around that, I'm sure it's probably happened during this interview. If not, it's because you and I are friends and have been friends for a long time, but like it's still, happens and it'll probably happen now that i'm talking about it but it's gotten better over the years and something that's insanely cute i know i'm talking so much no this is great for but me. something that's insanely cute is my grandpa definitely like no interest in the kind of music i'm playing um but i love him and i talk to him like once a year he calls me on my birthday and he goes, Hey, Brian, happy birthday. And I go, thanks, Grandpa. And he goes, all right, I better get off here. And I go, all right. And then I'll see him That's sometimes. So cute. Yeah. I'll see him sometimes like when I'm home. Um, and it's always nice, but we never really talk about the, the band. We never really, we just catch up. Um, and my dad one time asked me, he was like, do you have like a blinking thing? And I was like, yeah, why? And he was just like, I've never noticed it. And he was like, but grandpa said that uh, in your interviews, your blinking seems to be getting better. And I was like, 
he watches my interviews. That's so yeah. cute, and you've never even talked about it. Yeah. I mean, for what it's worth, I didn't notice until you said it. So maybe you haven't good. done it, or maybe you have done it, or maybe I don't even fucking notice. That's good. Also, it's just fucking blinking. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. What are you doing? Fucking. Well, in the beginning of like Knocked Loose getting interviewed, it was bad. I would be doing an interview, I'd be like, who gives a fuck though? You're going on stage and smashing it. You could do whatever you want right here, and I'd be like, this guy's fucking sick. <laughs> Speaking of that, you are fucking sick. We're on a time crunch here. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Check out the me. single. Check out all that shit. I love you. Love you. I hope to see your band soon. I don't want to fucking tour again. My first US tour ever. <laughs> Stick to your guns. Stray from the path. Knock loose. Yeah. There was another band, but we didn't talk about that. <laughs> How crazy is that? Yeah. Bunch of crazy lineups. I love you. Fucking good luck with everything. Peace. Thank Peace. You. Peace.